Guys, we have massive news coming out right now for your Oculus Quest 2. A massive update is coming and I can't wait for a lot of the features, but the big feature, the biggest one, at least for me, is Oculus Air Link. Is Oculus Air Link gonna kill virtual desktop? Well, watch until the end of the video and let's find out. Alright, so in this blog post, let's go through it together. It says, today we're announcing features that will begin rolling out soon in the V28 software update to the Oculus Quest headsets. Oculus Air Link is a wireless way to play PC VR games on Quest 2, while the new Infinite Office features make getting work done in VR even easier. We're also announcing native 120Hz support for Quest 2 for an ultra-smooth gameplay experience. So this isn't related to Air Link, but 120Hz support for the Quest 2, and I think it's going to be supported over Air Link. That, that, that's amazing. At that point, the only thing the Index really has on the Quest 2 is a slightly wider field of, well not slight, it's a lot wider field of view and better controllers, which honestly I actually prefer the Quest controllers over the Index. So really for me, the only difference is now the field of view. So that's kind of amazing. Let's keep going through the article. It says right here, without further ado, let's dive in. That is probably the cringiest thing I have ever ever seen in an oculus article i'm i'm sorry i mean i love you virtual reality oasis but that was cringy um let's keep going it says here note air link is part of v28 but it requires that both your headset and pc be running v28 software that means we'll unlock air link once both quest and pc v28 releases are rolled out so sounds like they're not going to be rolled out at the same time might take a, a little bit of maybe a few days a few weeks for the pc release to come out but um it looks like we're getting the quest 28 version pretty soon here since launching in 2019 and exiting beta last year oculus link has been widely used feature across the quest platform with a gaming pc and a compatible usb-c cable link has given people to access rifts impressive content library including games like Asgard's Wrath, Lone Echo, Stormland, and more. But of course, being tethered to your PC can break immersion and limit your mobility. We know gamers want to use Link without a wire to experience the full freedom of movement offered by Quest 2 while playing high-end titles that can only run on a gaming PC. That's why we've been working on a new streaming technology called Oculus Air Link, a completely wireless way to play PC VR content on Quest 2 using Wi-Fi built on the successful Oculus Link streaming pipeline. So a couple things here. It sounds like it's using Wi-Fi. Well, it doesn't sound like it. It says straight up it's using Wi-Fi. So it's not going to be much different from virtual desktop, but it is built on the Oculus Link streaming pipeline, which means they might have better compression. The compression they've been using to be able to transfer it through a wire, they'll probably use to transfer and then decompress, you know, the compression and decompression on the PC. They're going to be using their compression, which is probably better than what virtual desktop has. We'll just have to wait and see. Air Link will ship in experimental mode on Quest 2, and we're excited to hear the community's feedback while Air Link is in early development. So unfortunately, if you're still on Quest 1, it sounds like it's going to be exclusive to Quest 2. I'm not sure. It didn't say exclusive, but it said it will ship on Quest 2. So we'll just have to see, but it sounds like it's only going to be on Quest 2. Air Link gives people more options for accessing PC VR games on Quest 2. Oculus Link cables will still provide a robust and consistent experience, while those with a strong Wi-Fi setup can choose to stream wirelessly through through AirLink. If you want to charge your headset during your VR exploits, experience the highest fidelity of visuals possible, or if your available high Wi-Fi network is congested or unsecured, Link via USB-C cable is the way to go. If you have a strong and secure Wi-Fi network, and if your play space is ideally within roughly 20 feet of your Wi-Fi router, AirLink will be a good option. Okay, so again here, it sounds like it's running just like virtual desktop, and they're basically saying the same thing that I've been saying. If you want to have the best visuals, use Link. If you want to experience wireless play without, you know, being tethered, use uh, AirLink, use virtual desktop, use the network. Uh, it sounds like it's going to be running basically the same way. You just need a strong Wi-Fi connection and a five gigahertz router, just like with a virtual desktop. Sounds like it's using the exact same technology. The only difference, like I said, is that they're using their compression. So it might be a little bit better. We'll just have to wait and see. While AirLink is an experimental feature, not every network and PC setup will be ideal. We're continuing to improve AirLink's performance and compatibility for different configurations configurations, but in the meantime, check out our guide for best practices. We'll check that out in a second. Known issues and to see if your setup will work well with AirLink. We recommend following the guidelines we provided to ensure the best experience, including only use AirLink on a secure Wi-Fi network that you trust. Use a 5 gigahertz network on AC or AX router, which by the way, I'm pretty sure that's just like a Wi-Fi, the regular Wi-Fi versus Wi-Fi 6. Um, connected via Ethernet cable to your PC and make sure your PC meets the Oculus Link requirements. 
So again, this is all just going back to like, you know, if you haven't seen my tutorials for virtual desktop, like about the routers and stuff, go check those out after this video can keep watching this one, but check those out afterwards because that'll show you what kind of router you'll need. I've got a review that compares all kinds of routers. Looks like the same kind of concepts to get a good router for virtual desktop. It's the same thing for, for AirLink. Here's how to get started with the AirLink once it rolls out. First, download and install the Oculus PC app if you haven't already. You'll need PC software V28, which is rolling out soon. Next, navigate to settings, beta in the PC app, enable AirLink, toggle, then put on your Quest 2 headset, navigate to settings, experimental, and enable AirLink. To disable AirLink, go back and go back to using Link with a USB-C cable, you'll need to disable AirLink from the experimental panel. I'll go over more in depth how to actually do this later on, um, but for now, you know, once it rolls out and once I have access to it, I'll do a whole video about that, but it sounds pretty simple, pretty straightforward to do. We'll work to improve AirLink over time, including performance, visual quality, and the ability to run in less than ideal wireless scenarios. We look forward to hearing your community's feedback. While AirLink is in experimental mode, uh, you can submit feedback and bug reports via support.oc. Com. So, I mean, I feel bad for the virtual de do desktop developer guy Goat, and I mean, him by himself produced this amazing software that was doing amazing things for us, but I just don't see how his software can hold a candle to Oculus. I mean, Oculus has tons of developers that are going to be working on this. They have tons of people that are going to be making it better, and they have their compression, so I, I honestly think that this might be a virtual desktop killer. I mean, until we have a chance to try it out for ourselves and compare the two together, I just don't see how Virtual Desktop will be able to compete. I, I don't know. I mean, we'll just have to wait and see. I mean, for all I know, this could be trash. For all we know, Oculus Airlink could be trash and we're still all going to be using Virtual Desktop. I mean, one thing that comes to mind, one thing that worries me is, you know, Airlink might only be compatible with Oculus games. I wonder if we'll be able to use it to play, you know, Steam VR games and games from other platforms, or will it be exclusively for Oculus games? That's that's going to be a big deciding factor in whether or not we'll keep using virtual desktop or not. All right, so I just checked out their guide. Definitely go check that out. Um, this might even be helpful if you're still trying to use virtual desktop. It's got some awesome information that is kind of hard to find. That's one positive of Oculus doing this is they've got tr like troubleshooting guides and things here that virtual desktop didn't necessarily have. I mean, the virtual desktop community was great and we all helped each other, but it was hard to find like official support and official guides like this. I mean, this has got information saying that like, you know, a non mesh network configuration is best. You know, that's something I didn't really know for virtual desktop. And it has information about, you know, switching between five gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz during a session. Um, it, you know, you can have, like how you can fix that on your network if, it, if it's switching back and forth, such as just disabling 2.4 gigahertz network. I mean, it's got all kinds of information there it's basically saying the same stuff that we need for you know for regular you know virtual desktop it's all going to still apply here because they're using the same technology one thing i did notice here is that it talks about the max bit rate values for amd and nvidia gpus that they're different so on amd you can set up to 100 megabytes per second and then on an nvidia you can set up to 200 megabytes per second now when i'm doing virtual desktop i usually do about 90 megabytes per second and it looks great i can see a little bit of the compression artifacts when i'm doing 90 megabytes per second but it still looks great so i mean if you're on amd it should be fine i wonder if this is the same thing for for a virtual desktop i've never i have an nvidia graphics card so i don't know maybe comment down below if you have an amd graphics card and let me know that's pretty much it for this video guys is it going to be a virtual desktop killer i really don't know but trust me as soon as this releases i will be out there i will be testing it and i will be trying it out giving you guys tutorials and all the information that you need to be able to make this work the best so that we can have a wireless pc vr experience because that's really where this platform is going. That's where the future of VR sits, is with wireless PC VR experiences. So thanks for watching. Subscribe so you can see those future videos. But that's it. I'm out.